Hello and welcome to another edition of a little show I like to call Forgotten Franchises. Now, uh, first of all, I want to uh, give you a little trivia to start off this video. Of course, you know the name of the video, then you're not going to be surprised. But, hey, if you're just watching this just for the hell of it, it's a good idea here. Uh, here's a, uh, most recently in the NFL draft, Jameis Winston, quarterback from Florida State University, went number one overall in the draft. And uh, that got me to thinking, uh, in the state of Florida, who was the first, the first, first overall pick taken from a school in the state of Florida? Now, if you think it was uh, Russell, Maryland, you'd be wrong. If you thought it was Vinny Testaverde, you'd be wrong. The answer is, hey, you guys. Yes, Sloth himself, John Matuzak. 1973, Houston Oilers took John Matuzak, first overall pick from the University of Tampa. Not USF. USF existed, and it's a much bigger university. But the University of Tampa had a football program, and a very good football program, that lasted from 1933 to 1974. Um, the the uh, program was... Uh, finished in 1974, they finished it, but had a tremendous, tremendous history. Now, I'm just taking a look real quick here. I've got a few notes here, and I'm just going to give you a few uh, facts, okay? This, the the program went all-time 201, 160, and 12, uh, with a postseason record of 3-0-0. Now, from 1933 until 1971, they were, in, in essence, a uh, Division II school, um, but they did play in two cigar bowls, which were, uh, were bowls games that were played at the FCS level, and they were played in Tampa. And um, they played smaller schools like LaGrange and stuff like that, but when they, uh, they moved over, they actually played Florida State for nine straight years. Uh, beating uh, Florida State the first year, uh, the first and second years. Uh, so they had an ongoing rivalry right there. I and mean, they came into the uh, NCAA Division I in 1971. They ended up going, number one, they had the first overall pick come out of there in John Matuzak. Uh, other names to come out of there... Uh, uh, Freddie Solomon, wide receiver who ended up playing with the uh, with the San Francisco 49ers, was a big time player up there. He was uh, he was, came out of uh, Tampa, but and they played in Old Tampa Stadium, the uh, the big sombrero. Before that, they played at the University of Tampa uh, Field, which is actually where uh, Babe Ruth hit the longest recorded home run in the spring game while playing for Boston Red Sox. So. A very interesting uh, b group of circumstances right there. But here's what I'm going to do. Yeah, they played Plant Field. That was, the, that was the name of it right there. But I'm just going to uh, give you a little lowdown here. Uh, they were played as the Spartans. They wanted to have a, uh, a rivalry with uh, St. Petersburg Junior College. Uh, who were the Trojans, so they wanted to have like Spartans and Trojans, and so they would have a rivalry right there. Um, Nash Higgins was the first uh, coach from 33 to 40, when he had a 36 and 39 5 record. Frank Sinkwich, a uh, Heisman Trophy winner, uh, coached two seasons there for the 12 7 and 1 record. He is a member of the College Football Hall of Fame, by the way. Um, Marcelo Huerta was the coach from 1952 to 1961, where he went 63, 37, and 2, including those two wins against Florida State. Um, and he was he was known for winning road games, by the way. Uh, and Frank Huerta, uh, first head coach in the Arena League, Tampa Bay Storm, coached the Spartans from. 1968 to 1970 with a 25 and 6 records, and he actually left to go coach Miami. Uh, Bill Fulcher coached the team. Earl Bruce uh, went 10 and 2 and finished with Den Dennis Freisel, uh, who coached uh, going 8 and 3 in 1973 and 19, uh, 6 and 5 in 1974. Um, the big game. This is this is just something that. You know, there were some notable players that come out of there. Freddie Solomon, Johnny Matuzak, Daryl Carlton, uh, Noah Jackson, Leon McQuay. Um, 
Jim Delgazio, Ted Green, M.L. Harris, uh, Don Herndon, um, Morris Legrand, uh, John Mooring, and uh, J.C. Wilson, and Mike Woods also. So they had, they, had, they had some talent that came through that program. Um, but the, the game I want to talk about here, the one that's most important to me, I think that is the most interesting game, is the 1972 Tangerine Bowl, which is now the Citrus Bowl. Uh, but at the time, it was a NCAA Division I bowl game. Their Tampa played Kent State. Now, uh, the most the, the interesting thing about that game, if you really want to take a look back at it, the uh, Kent State on that football program, in that football team, not only do you have the current coach of Missouri, was on that team, but so was Nick Saban, head coach of Alabama, was a defensive back on that team. It gets better than that, actually. Freddie Solomon had a touchdown catch that actually uh, led to the win. Okay, Kent State started coming back, but it was it was uh, it was Freddie Solomon's touchdown catch that actually set it up. But the MVP of that game was a fullback for for Tampa who caught uh, two touchdown passes, and it was none other than Paul Orndorff. Mr. Wonderful. He actually was a fullback, and he ended up uh, getting drafted by the New Orleans Saints later on, but he decided to become a pro wrestler, and his, you know, he's a Hall of Fame pro wrestler, but he was a great fullback for the University of Tampa. Um, and that's just, that's just amazing. That, that shows you the local area kind of thing. And in 1974, the president of the university said that they were losing too much money. The University of Tampa is actually a very small school. Um, and they decided that uh, they were just going to cut that part of their athletics. They still have baseball and basketball, and uh, I believe they have a rowing team. Um, but it, it's a very small campus. Have you ever seen it? It's a Henry Plant Museum down my downtown Tampa. You ever see it? it's great. Uh, but this is a this is a a history that needs to be remembered. Um, at the uh, Tampa History Museum, they do have a section dedicated to the University of Tampa, and I'm glad they do, because this is something that the, the local area people should be embrace. Now, I wish that the program was still around so USF could have a true city rivalry like they have in Los Angeles and Houston. Uh, just have a, this city rivalry where one half of the cities for one, one half of the cities for the other. Uh, it's one of the things that USF is missing is a true rivalry. Um, they're trying to get one with UCF, but for some reason they don't want it. I, I don't know what the story is with that. Um, whatever they they want to you know be a they want to have a rivalry with Hofstra, which is up in New York State. So I. I don't know where to go with that. So, but University of Tampa football. If you ever take a look back, um, uh, take a look at, at 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 some of the games they played and the, the traditions that started up at University of Tampa. Uh, a great football program no longer exists, and it's a shame. But it's something that should be remembered and cherished. So, uh, if you have a chance, check out check out University of Tampa uh, football history. Uh, now, if you like this video, feel free to give it a like. If you don't like the video, feel free to click dislike. If you want to see more videos like this, by all means, please subscribe. Uh, I have new ones of these coming up all the time. I have all kinds of shows on my channel. Check them out. Um, if you have a suggestion for any team that is, uh, doesn't exist anymore, be it college or pro or any type of sport, uh, please let me know. Enter my comments, or you can all go ahead and reach me by email. My email address is below. So is my Twitter and Facebook accounts. Uh, just let me know, and I will do some research and see if uh, I can get you on this program, get the uh, your, uh, your forgotten franchise. So until next time, I'll see you the next time I cover a forgotten franchise.